As the Philippines was struggling to fight against the Spaniards, war broke out between Spain and the United States. The Filipino revolutionaries took this as an opportunity and fought with the Americans against a common enemy. However, their victory against Spain was only temporary, as they soon realized that they were simply betrayed and handed down to a new colonial power. This is the American occupation of the Philippines. In 1898, the United States launched an attack on Spain, citing its inhumane treatment of the people of Cuba in the Philippines as one of the reasons for the conflict. Prior to the war, Cuba was also in a war for independence from Spanish colonial rule. The U.S. was moved by reports of Spanish atrocities against the Cuban people and was compelled by humanitarian concerns, desiring to intervene and minimize their suffering. At the same time in Asia, the Philippines, another Spanish colony, was also involved in the revolution. The U.S. perceived this as a chance to extend its influence into Asia and establish its position as a global power. The Philippines has a coveted territory, abundant in valuable resources such as timber, minerals, and arable land. And its good position in the heart of Southeast Asia rendered it as an essential gateway to the rest of the region. During this period, the U.S. was also driven by a sense of superiority and a belief in the superiority of American-style democracy and capitalism. Numerous American leaders saw it as their responsibility to civilize and modernize the Filipinos, who they regarded as primitive and in dire need of American teaching and supervision. The United States arrived in the Philippines during the Battle of Manila Bay in May 1898, when the U.S. Navy under Admiral George Dewey destroyed the Spanish fleet. The United States then deployed troops in Manila and began to seize the city, which permitted the Philippine revolutionaries elsewhere to gain control of the rest of the archipelago. However, the U.S. support for the Philippines was fueled by American self-interest, rather than a genuine desire to aid the Filipinos in their quest for independence. The U.S. initially pledged to assist the Filipino cause and assist them in establishing a democratic government and achieving eventual independence. But after its victory over Spain, the U.S. broke its promise and planned to set up the Philippines up for annexation much like it had done in Hawaii. Spain then gave up control of the Philippines to the U.S. for $20 million after being defeated in the Spanish-American War, which made the Philippines a colony of America. Although the U.S. had claimed that they were fighting for Cuba's independence rather than for land expansion, they saw the takeover of the Philippines as a chance to spread American power in Asia and opted to keep it as a colony. The United States then established a colonial administration in the Philippines with William Howard Taft serving as the first governor before he became a president of the United States. The United States originally portrayed its colonization of the Philippines as a mission of benevolent assimilation, promising to modernize and civilize the country in a positive light. Benevolent assimilation was a term used by American politicians to justify their imperialism and control over the Philippines. The U.S. claimed to have a duty to bring its superior political, economic, and cultural values to the Philippines promising to modernize and improve their lives with education, infrastructure, and other amenities. However, this policy was often used to mask their true intentions of imperialism. The Filipinos eventually saw through this corrupt statement and felt betrayed by the broken promises of the Americans. They had initially welcomed the Americans and even fought alongside them for independence from Spain, but now turned against them. This led to yet another bloody struggle, with the Filipino army ill-equipped undertrained, disorganized, and still in the process of establishing itself against a stronger, better trained, and technologically advanced imperial power. After briefly tasting independence, the Filipinos had to fight for it once again. The escalating conflict between the United States and the Philippines sparked a full-blown war from 1899 to 1902, which American leaders peculiarly called the Philippine Insurrection. Filipino fighters employed a range of tactics, including guerrilla warfare, ambushes, and hit-and-run attacks. Although generally poorly equipped and lacking the training and discipline than of the American army, they compensated for these deficiencies with their expertise in the local terrain. In contrast, the American military capitalized on superior technology, organization, and cutting-edge weapons and communication technologies, such as heavy artillery and the telegraph. Moreover, they established concentration camps and employed scorched earth tactics, such as the burning of villages and fields, which resulted in the displacement of millions of Filipinos and caused widespread suffering and starvation among the local population. 
The Philippine government also faced several internal conflicts that weakened its ability to fight against the Americans, including disorganization, corruption, and betrayal. Overall, the Filipinos proved to be a formidable defender, and the war was a grueling and expensive campaign for the United States as they faced a determined and resourceful adversary on an unfamiliar terrain. Ultimately, the Filipinos were defeated due to the overwhelming firepower and resources of the United States. Following their triumph, the Americans continued their plans to establish the Philippines as a colony. The United States enforced economic policies that favored American enterprises and undermined the Philippine economy, including policies that coerced the Philippines to import American goods and prevented Philippine industries from competing with American ones. The Americans also implemented educational policies that aimed to incorporate Filipinos into American culture and teach them English, which helped spread American influence in the Philippines. In addition, the government in charge of the colony used force to stop Filipino rebels. They did this by creating the Philippine Constabulary, which was a police force trained and given equipment by the Americans to maintain control and stop any uprising. In 1935, the U.S. granted the Philippines a Commonwealth status, which provided some autonomy and self-government, but maintained absolute control over the country's foreign affairs and defense. The Commonwealth was established to facilitate the Philippines' preparation for eventual independence, and it was led by distinguished Filipino leaders, with Manuel Quezon as its inaugural president. During this period, the Commonwealth had its own constitution, legislature, and judiciary, and enjoyed more autonomy than it had under previous American colonial rule. It was not until 1946 when the United States would finally grant full independence to the Philippines, along with other countries that were pushing for self-determination and decolonization after World War II. The United States' granting of independence was seen as keeping their promise to allow self-rule in the Philippines and acknowledging the Filipinos' fight for independence and their desire to govern themselves. Thank you so much for watching and if you liked this one, check out another video for you right here. I really put a lot of time and research to make these videos for you guys, so see you in the next video.